A site-to-site -site secure connection is a powerful solution for securely connecting multiple locations, even across different countries, without the hassle of expensive hardware, leased lines, or complicated setups. It creates a protected tunnel for data to flow safely between lo business locations, ensuring seamless and secure communication. With OpenVPN, you get the benefits of a secure tunnel without sacrificing network speed, or investing in costly, complex infrastructure. And if you're looking for a scalable, hassle-free solution, Cloud Connects makes it even easier, offering secure connectivity without the need for on-premise servers. It's a smart choice for businesses ready to expand without worrying about security or network performance. A site-to-site -site connection is just a way to link different networks together. This could mean connecting two or more office locations, uh, connecting different cloud providers like AWS to Azure, a Google Cloud Platform, or so on, or even connecting a cloud provider to a physical office or data center. Basically, anytime you need two separate networks to communicate securely, a site-to-site -site connection comes into play. One note to make is that virtual server providers by cloud providers such as AWS and Azure, or even virtual server providers like DigitalOcean, Use virtual network interface cards or VNEX to handle network traffic. By default, each VNEX performs a source destination check on all incoming and outgoing network packets. This means that the VNEX examines the packet headers to determine whether the source or destination IP address matches the instance to which the VNEX is attached. If the packet source or destination doesn't match the instance, the VNEC automatically drops the packet, preventing it from being forwarded somewhere else. In our example on the screen, the destination is 192.168.1.20, which does not match the VNEC's IP address. As a result, the VNEC will drop the packet. This is different from a situation where the source or destination is disabled or turned off. So to allow the connector to route traffic, the source destination check on the VNIC must be disabled. This ensures that the instance can properly forward traffic to and from other networks instead of blocking packets that are not directly addressed to it. For specific instructions on how to disable the source destination check, refer to the documentation provided by your cloud provider, as the process may be different depending on the platform. Again, AWS will be different than Azure, will be different than cloud, uh, Google Cloud. So make sure to double check this if you're using a virtual machine. Now let's look at our scenario in this demo. We have two locations, one in the West Coast in Los Angeles area. This is our headquarter. And we have a branch office in East Coast of the United States in New York. Our uh, branch office has a web server. You can see the IP address and our headquarter has a file server. You can see the IP address on the screen. What we're gonna do, we need to install a connector on each of these locations. These connectors are gonna be installed on a Ubuntu machine in my case here. And uh, we're gonna set up the routes and IP services for this demo. One last note before we switch to admin user interface and see how to set up our site to site is that when you connect a site to WPC, you want to make sure that clients from that site can easily reach other sites and remote users. The key to making this work uh, is setting up static routes on your gateway router. Basically, you'll need to add routes uh, that tell your network how to reach WPC subnets and the subnets of other connected networks. With the right routes in place, uh, traffic flows smoothly keeping your sites and remote clients securely connected without any headaches. As you can see on the screen, this is just an example of how uh, I set up my routes uh, on my router here. Uh, I have the uh, subnet of the other side. Uh, again, uh, the, the IP address that here I use, it's uh, my connector in our headquarter, and then the subnets of uh, WPC, and then my local uh, subnet. Again, for specific instructions on how to set up your routes on your router, make sure you uh, check the uh, documentation provided by that uh, manufacturer because every router is different. So now let's uh, switch to our admin user interface and connect our uh, branch office to our Cloud Connect. As you can see, I've already connected my headquarter to Cloud Connect. So the process is gonna be the same as you're gonna see here 
when I connect our branch office to uh, Cloud Connexa. So let's go ahead and click on Add Network. For the scenario, we're going to choose Site to Site here and then click on Continue. Let's give a name to our network. I'm going to call it uh, NY for New York Network. And then for the tunneling protocol, we're going to leave it as OpenVPN. Then for the connector, let's uh, name the connector. We're going to call it NY Connector. Uh, we need to choose a, the closest region to our resource, which is going to be, in our case, New York, New Jersey. And then we're going to click on Next. Now we need to uh, choose our provider type. As you can see, there are uh, options for cloud provider, operating system, and virtual private servers, and compatible routers. But I mentioned earlier that we're going to install it on a Linux, on a, a specifically Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to choose Linux here. And then for the Linux distribution, click on the drop down, and we're going to choose uh, Ubuntu 24. And we can see the script that we have to run on our machine. So I'm just going to copy this and open up my terminal. And uh, let me elevate the privileges first here. And then paste that uh, command and run it. This is going to take a few minutes. So uh, let's uh, wait till it's done. Here we go. It's done. Now it's asking us to enter the uh, setup token. So going back to uh, admin user interface, you can see the option for generating token. So let's go ahead and click on that. And uh, here we go. The token is here. Let's copy it. And then let's go back to the terminal and paste it here. And hit Enter again. And we, here we go. We have the connector installed on uh, in our branch office. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, click on uh, Next. And uh, you can see that we're connected. And we can see the green light. So go ahead and click on Next. Here, you'll find some key information needed to set up your static routes on your gateway, as I mentioned earlier. Essentially, you'll need to define routes that guide your network on how to reach WPC subnets and other connected networks. With the right routes in place, uh, traffic moves seamlessly, ensuring secure and hassle-free connectivity between your sites and remote clients. Click on Next when you're done getting that information. This is where you can add applications. Applications make it super easy to manage access to both public and private resources by simply using domain names. Uh, the best part of it, you don't need to worry about configuring IP routing for your applications at all. Cloud Connexa takes uh, care of everything, automatically routing traffic to your applications just using uh, the domain names that you've set up. In this demo, we're not going to do that. We're going to use the IP routes. Now, when it comes to route and uh, IP service, think of the network routes as a way to tell Cloud Connexa where to send network traffic. When you set up a route, you're basically saying, hey, this network is responsible for a specific range of IP addresses or just one IP address. But keep in mind that the same IP range cannot be assigned to multiple networks. Each must be unique. If your network needs to have um, access to applications using IP addresses instead of domain names, you'll need to add routes. These routes uh, define which public or private IP subnets should be directed to specific network. Once set up, Cloud Connects all automatically uh, pushes these routes to the routing tables of connected clients, ensuring smooth connectivity. On top of that, you can set up IP services to control the and secure traffic within your network. IP service helps you with specifying source of traffic, so you can later use it in the access groups. Uh, you can restrict uh, protocols or ports to allow only certain type of network traffic. You can control access by defining who can use the service through the access groups. And you can monitor traffic more easily by assigning a name to an IP address for better visibility and network stack. In short, routes guide traffic while IP services add control and security to how that traffic is handled. So let's go ahead and add the routes. But before we do that, let's go back to our slide. We have our branch office and we have our headquarters office. Right now we're setting up our branch office. So we need to add the uh, 10.0.0.0/20 as a route if you want to give access to a whole uh, network. But in our case, we're just going to use uh, the web server IP address. Instead of uh, 
defining a range of IP addresses, we're just going to use one IP address, and that's a web server IP address, 10.0.13.191.32. So we're going to use this for the route and IP services. Let's head back to our Cloud Connexa. And we're going to click on Add Route, and we're going to add our route. So the IP address is going to be 10.0.13.191.32. And we're going to do the same thing for our IP service. Now, here for the IP service, we're going to give it a name. So we call it Web Server here. And then for the uh, protocols, we can choose custom and choose any protocols we want. For example, Web Server HTTP, HTTPS, TFTP. And then I'm going to give ICMP here for all of them. And then click on uh, submit. And then we need to type the IP address again, which is 10.0.13.191 um, uh, slash 32. And click on add IP services. Now, once we're done with this part, we can click on next. Now, the last part is going to be the access group. Access group helps you set up access control policies to manage how user groups, hosts, networks, and application or IP services interact with each other. You can either create a new access group or update an existing one here to include access for any new uh, networks or application or IP services you've added. For the purpose of this uh, video, we're just going to leave it as a default, and uh, we're going to click on Finish here. So we can see now that our New York network is online. And if we click on applications, uh, we don't have any applications. We'll click on IP services. We can see the IP services um, that we just set up and the routes. And then if you look at the connector, we can see our connector is online. If you look at our headquarter, as I said, I've already set up this network. We can see that, uh, again, we don't have any applications uh, for the headquarter either. And then for the IP services, we have our time card. If you remember the slides, the IP address was 192.168.1.68. And then for the routes, again, I did the same thing. I just used the IP address of that server, not a range of IP addresses, but that's up to you if you want to do a range of IP addresses. So let's go ahead and test this. Um, as you can see, I got, um, uh, I'm connected uh, to one of the uh, machines in um, our New York branch. And this is another machine uh, in our headquarter. And then we can see the information here. So if you remember, our web server IP address was 10.0.13.191, which is this machine here. If I do this, uh, if config, we can see the address here. So this is in our New York branch. And this is our time card uh, system, uh, which is 192.168.1.68. Again, if I do an IP config, here we can see the IP address. So let's see if we can uh, ping uh, the other machine, the New York machine, from here. And uh, here we go. We get in reply back. Now let's do the same thing on the um, our, our machine in New York. So we're going to type uh, 68, and we should get a reply back. So our site-to-site -site is up and running. 